my latest project. It's Hobie, uh, Hank Parker, Parker Hobby Mirage Fisherman. Came with a dress sock and a few uh, lures and things. Yeah, it's a little dirty, needs a little work. But this kayak looks like at one point somebody was hanging it from the, uh, the rear handle. Ripped it open and then tried to fix it with uh, flexo garbage. So, yeah. This is that. Oh, they they spoons on a bunch of silicone too. Little pieces there. That's nasty. Yeah, I can fix that. What is this? Part of the uh... oh, that's the rudder down line. We'll figure that out. Cool. I need to find the full ID on it. Find out what year it is. But it came with everything but the Mirage Drive. It had a paddle of seat. Do 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 Hank Parker. I just bought this uh Mirage Hobie Outback uh Hank Park Hank Parker signature series. I got this thing for three hundred dollars. Thought I was getting a pretty good deal. Uh I mean I guess I did get a good deal on it, but there's some stuff I need to point out on it. <laughs> and it's a demo? Why would you make a demo this way? Anyway, I just realized that. That was the first time seeing that. So, apparently whoever had this thing, the pedal drive did not come with it. That's my pedal drive. And it does fit. It's the older version. The uh, rear end looks like they were hanging it from... Uh, the pad eye, but look how look how thin the plastic is in this thing. I mean, even even Pelican kayaks are thicker than that. This is how thin the plastic is. And just for comparison, this this plastic came out of a Hobie Outback. And look at the difference in the thickness of these things. Uh, that's ridiculous. I mean, it's it looks like it's less than half the thickness. So. I don't know uh, if Hobie was skimping on plastic when they were making these just so they can get them out because they were selling these things for over $3,000. Man, I'm glad I didn't buy one at $3,000. I bought it one-tenth. But, uh, I mean, I'm able to fix it. This is stuff that I do and then patch it. But I'm damn sure not going to put a handle in that. Um... I might add a handle to on the side here, maybe two handles, just to give you some place to hold it. But I love Hank Parker to death, but he got duped putting his name on this product. So if you're looking to buy a Hobie Outback and you're going to buy a Hank Parker, take the back hatch off. And push up on here, and if it does, if it does that, do not buy it. I mean, I got this for three hundred bucks. I think it was worth the three hundred bucks, but I won't be able to put a pedal drive and sell it for what I could sell those for. See, I have Hobie Hobie kayaks, so I know I know the kind of quality to expect. That the fact that it was a Hobie Outback was the reason I even bought it. These are. 
these aren't part of the kayak. It's just something I made and stuck in there. But just for your information, buyer beware. I've already started on this <coughs> patch here. I haven't started patching anything yet right now. I'm just trying to get all this uh, nasty glue from the flex tape or whatever kind of tape that was and the silicone and they melted glue or uh, plastic on here but they just did it over the top they didn't try melting this plastic together first no wire mesh no nothing but uh yeah i mean look how thin that is that's ridiculous um yeah you shouldn't be able to flex the top of a kayak with just with the one finger yeah, I mean, I'm just pushing up. I'm not hitting or nothing. This is, yeah, that's just, that's just crazy thin. So, anyway, oh, you can see where they had moved the pad eye down here from where it pulled out over here. But I think what I'm going to do is uh, I have these handles. Of course, now that I'm over here, I won't be able to find one. Here we go. Whoa. Let's see how one of these would reach across there. Huh, this package isn't even open yet. Uh, of course, I'll put a, a plate or some something inside of here before I had to get, they're kind of high, so I don't know, <clears throat> maybe I'll just come up with my own design, mount them from here to here, just where you can grab it, either that or put two separate handles here, I don't know, we'll figure it out, but for now, I'm just figuring out how to patch this, yeah, more to come. I got my, my uh, what do you call it? Hey, watch this. As soon as it touches, it just starts melting. It. 75 watts working right there, baby. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up these edges and get this all stuck back together. Then I'll put some wire mesh. I think I'm just going to put the wire mesh along the cracks because usually what I'll do is I'll put a whole wire mesh over the whole thing. I don't know. I'll figure it out as I go. I guess I should have been recording what I was doing, but uh, first what I did was the crack itself, I melt the pla I line it up as much as I can. I'll line this up as much as I can, melt the plastic, melt the two sides together. Once they're holding, that's why I keep a wet rag and a, and a spray bottle of water nearby. So as soon as I have them where I need them, I, I wet them to harden the plastic, let it sit for a little bit, then I'm melting plastic over it. Uh, I'm still going to add wire mesh over the top of this, but uh, you got you to gotta fuse the two sides together. You can't just stick plastic on the top of it and think it's going to hold. That's what apparently somebody here did because you can see the plastic inside is not melted. There's just a little thin layer of pla blue plastic on top of it. And this is, uh, I didn't really look, but this is the first green I saw, which is the bottom of a, I don't even know who makes it. That's the bottom of a trash can. Oh, here we go. Nope, didn't say. But, uh, yeah, these big, these big heavy duty commercial trash cans, uh, little tykes, play school uh, furniture sets. I don't know if you can see back there, way back there. I got just about every color you can imagine way back there. But anyway, this is what I'm doing. Just giving you a quick little update. Let me give you a quick demo real quick. See what I'm doing is I'm fusing the two sides together. So I've got this hot iron. The best thing I would suggest, if you don't, if you can't find one of these, get a uh, wood burning tool and use the flat tip. So what I do is I'm melting 
I'm pushing from each side like this, melting the two sides together until it's all it's all melted together. Right here, there's a little section here that needs a little more. Tilt, push, tilt, push. You gotta push inward so that all the melted stuff goes together. I mean, there's still a little leftover silicone and stuff in there. But uh, I keep this wet rag nearby and then as soon as I have it fused where I need it, I lay the wet rag on there to cool it, which makes the plastic stay where I put it. I mean, it's holding. So now I gotta find that other little piece. There it is. Piece that goes in here. So what I think I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna fuse it like this first. I'm gonna fuse it like this first and while it's hot, then I'll bring it down and, and match it up. The thing is, while I had my ha this access point here, I was able to lift and lift and drop all this to make it go where I needed it, but I'll get it. As I was setting this in place, I was thinking, well, I don't want to leave those uh, nut wells or whatever in there. So I'm thinking about cutting them out, but actually if I cut them out, I have all this extra plastic I could use for fusing it. So that's what I'm about to do with these little dikes. I'm going to cut those out and I'm going to use the plastic for fusing them together. Since it's the same plastic. Good idea. Well, my idea of using these two little nubs actually didn't work. Problem was when I was heating it, the metal inside was heating and I don't know, it wouldn't let go of those. So what I did was the same way as I just melted from that side to this side, from that side to this side, just back and forth until I got it all fused together. So it's holding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to melt this in, fill this in. As like I said, as you're as you're heating this, you know, uh, cool it off. This had like a little bump in it here. I don't know if that's supposed to be there or not. But while it was hot, I pushed it down right here and sprayed it with water. So kind of gave it a. I'm pushing down pretty hard on this, and excuse my finger, I smushed it. Uh, yeah, I think I fixed it all right. I really don't like the rudder design. But nothing I can do about that, I guess. I mean, I could design my own rudder. But, I mean, this this one kind of works. It's been on this thing since... I don't know. Does anybody know where the uh, whole idea is on these things? Because I sure as heck couldn't find it. Oh, there's something right there. I think I found it. Uh, it's just scratch marks. Yeah. I don't know. I don't see any. Maybe it doesn't have one because it's a demo. They have one of those hot things when they put demo on here. I don't see one on the other side. I actually had two uh, Outbacks that were also demos. Yellow ones. All right, well, here we go. I'm going to stop doing the little play-by-play, -play and I'm just going to patch it, and then I'll bring you back when I start putting a wire mesh on it. Well, here's the completed patch. Well, not completed, but uh, just the surface itself. Yeah, it's still, still a little hot there. I'm going to put a little more filler in there, smooth, smooth a little bit of these edges out, and then comes the wire mesh. Kind of debating on the wire mesh, I don't know. Maybe I'll just run it along here. I don't need to melt it into here, that's... I don't know, we'll see. <clears throat> I'll decide in a little bit. Go with a strip through here, a strip through there, and then this one, that little oval-shaped one there, that one's going to go over the top of both of them to kind of overlap them. But this is all I do as I just push down on the... Uh, to heat the, heat the mesh and then kind of push down on it so that the plastic oozes up. 
I was actually using the tip of a this my drill tip uh, but for now it actually works this way too so you just heat up a little section and then push down on the mesh and the plastic oozes up through it give it a little blow and ta-da the mesh is under the plastic But you got to start at one end and work your way up because if you, st I've done it before where I'll tack one end over here and then I'll tack one end over here and I'll tack it in the middle and I wind up with these uh, mesh bubbles. But there you go. Now you know how to mesh your cracks. Okay, I reached a stopping point. Got to go grocery shopping. But uh, I ran a mesh along here, it curves and goes this way. I ran one here that comes up and goes this way. And this one is going to go up over the top of both of those. It's got a little lip on it right here for going over this edge. So once I melt that in, I'll put a little more plastic over the top to smooth it out. And dishes are done, man. I guess before I go any further, I've already put the mesh in here, a mesh along there, and then the big piece along here. And then uh, I've melted it all in. And right now I'm just coating it with plastic and then I'll smooth it all out. Figured I'd show this to you before I go any further. So what I do is I'll put the, the heat source in there and heat up the little section of, uh, but actually you start from one side and work your way across. Don't be jumping all over the place. Start at one end and work your way across as the, to get the mesh down. So what I'll do is I'll heat it and then I'll use the back of a screwdriver because it won't, it won't, uh, the heat won't transfer as fat, fast onto this acrylic or whatever it is. So what I'll use that is I'll push that, use that to push the mesh in or use the tip of the screwdriver to push the mesh down. Give it a few seconds to let it cool so that it holds it down. And then I'll move over to the next spot and I'll work my way over until I got it all in. Then I take, uh, Actually, the, the green trash can is a brute trash can. So I'm cutting off chunks of the trash can. And it's what I do is I heat the spot. And then I'll put the, put the plastic on there, pull it off. And then I'll, I'll be heating the top of the plastic and flipping it until it starts to stick. Once it starts to stick, then I'll smear it in there like butter. But, uh... Hold him. Couldn't have done that before. Here we go, that's the completed patch. They could use a little more smoothing, but I'm gonna wait till it completely cools before I do any of that. There's a few little rough edges here, but all of this plastic that you see here is coating over the patch. So this is just for visual purposes. Uh, I actually patched it, then I wire meshed it, and then I just coated it with more plastic to give it a to make it look a little better. I mean, it's still ugly, but... It's strong.